Hello everyone. Um, let's continue our discussion on chapter eight. Um, so this section is really the last section. What we are going to discuss is deep learning. So for deep learning, um, one thing you should be aware is really coming from neural networks. And then it's multi-layered neural networks. And then the question is how many layers are considered to be a lot and then considered to be uh, deep learning. Usually people use 20 as a rule of thumb. If you have more than 20 layers in your neural network, then people consider it as um, uh, deep learning. So here um, we want to discuss a special type of um, deep learning uh, network. Uh, it's called convolutional neural network. So for con convolutional neural network, it's widely used in the uh, image classification space. So now, uh, if you look at this chart, you can see that uh, for deep nets, it involves multiple, uh, multiple um, components. The first component is called, you have a set of input of images, the first component is called convolution, convolution layer hence the name of convolutional neural network. And then you can think about, okay, I have a convolutional layer. After the convolutional layer, there's a um, activation layer. It's called nonlinear activation. RELU, remember that RELU has the uh, nonlinear structure, if you remember. Um, let me get a pen and then I'll show you. ReLU is a classic example of being zero if it's less than something and then being X if it's larger than a threshold. That's uh, one type of um, activation, only one type, right? You know that we discussed there are multiple types of uh, activation function. It's just give you an example here. And the next layer is dimension reduction. It's also called pooling. I'll give you a specific example so that you know what is pooling. From activation, you have a pooling. Once you have the pooling, you flat the vector into 1D vector as an input for a fully connected neural network so that you can come back with the output. So now, if you look what are the major steps, right? I will say this will be the first step convolutional layer, second step, second step here. Um, hold on, let me use this. First step, second step, and then uh, third step, a pooling, fourth step, flatter, flattening, the fifth step, a fully collect, connected neural network, and then you can come back with outputs. So this is, um, um, a high level uh, illustration of uh, convolutional neural network. Let's go to a little bit deeper to see what exactly each step is trying to do. In the convolution step, it's nothing but trying to get an um, um, integral, integral of the overlapping area between two functions. And it's equivalent to sliding one function over the other function. So we have a function of fx, and then we have a kernel h, and then we are trying to get um, an integral of the overlapped area between those two functions. And similarly, you can also see that um, for 2D inputs such as image fxy, the 2D convolution with kernel hxy can be written as this function, which is becomes a double sum over a region of an image. We have a specific example that to show you uh, what that is in the next slide. Let's look at this. So let's use this example. Suppose this is our kernel. Kernel is something 
one actually very special uh, matrix that is uh, uh, in this example, it's an edge detection kernel. You can see that we have positive one and negative one in the corresponding um, corresponding corner points, but you have zero in other points so that you can use this matrix as a kernel function to detect where are the edges in your, uh, in your uh, image. So assume that initial data can be, initial image uh, can be uh, represented by six by six, um, six by six matrix. And then let's slide this three by three kernel function over this six by six and then calculate a new function that is called W, which is a convolution output. That convolution layer that we just discussed is really trying to do this. In this layer, convolution layer. So now, for example, the first the first entry from the output should be uh, using this kernel function put onto this uh, red box that I just uh, have on my screen and then you calculate the weight. It should be uh, using positive one times eight, zero times zero, negative one times two. Uh, excuse me, give me one second. Let me uh, close the window. Sorry. Um, so now, now if we calculate that, use this, as I said, this red square, which is a kernel function layering on the initial image, and then you calculate this summation, turns out to be 10. 10 would be our first entry. Then would be our first entry. And then if you move to the right, calculate the blue rectangle, what would be the output, right? So let's use positive one times zero is zero. That's zero, it's negative four. Zero, 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 negative four, that, that's negative eight, plus positive eight becomes a zero. So, and we can continue to do this. And then question is, what would be the output? What would be the dimension of the output? Would be one, two, three, and four, right? So it becomes four uh, columns that we know. And then similarly, if you continue to move down, one, two, three, and four. So the output is really four by four matrix. So original matrix is six by six image with a kernel function of three by three. And by sliding the kernel function, it gets a new convolution set that is the new matrix, which is four by four. Okay, and then let's continue our discussion. That's our convolution layer. And then after convolution layer, suppose that um, next, next step is really something we call pooling. Pooling is, um, is a dimension reduction technique by focusing on region of size of k by k and use some sort of uh, um, mechani mechanism that you put into place. Sometimes it's you, you use maximum value or average. And then one thing is uh, called maximum value is used. When maximum value is used, it is called max pooling. So you use a two by two matrix in the example uh, that we saw in the bottom of this page, then uh, you just use a region of two by two, focus on that region of two by two, and then get a maximum entry of that 
two by two is nine. You put it into uh, your uh, matrix. And then here will be eight, it will be four, it will be uh, six and nine. And even at the beginning, it should be eight, nine, six. Uh, that's how you come back with the pooling. And then in the pooling, you just get a new matrix that is uh, more, more like abstraction based on initial matrix, come back with a um, smaller um, number of dimensions. That's our second step. Remember, we have convolution, pooling, and then flattening, right? Next step would be really flattening. With the matrix that we just had, 896, 694, after pulling, you can do this flattening. It becomes 896, 694, 489. That would be our new uh, vector. Use this vector as our input for the fully connected neural nets. And then to try to come back with uh, neural nets, that can predict our, um, that can be used for our classification. That's the flattening step. And then for the fully connected neural nets, what you do is um, you can use fully connected, but sometimes we use some sort of uh, um, dropout operation that can be used. The idea of dropping out is uh, neurons, neurons in art artificial neural networks can be ignored or removed with probability of P, which can reduce the number of parameters and reduce the complexity of the network. Oftentimes people use P equal to 0.25 uh, as the um, dropout ratio or dropout probability. So you could use AlexNet, ImageNet, or TensorFlow to do um, uh, deep learning for the convolutional neural networks. So if we go back again to take a look at the graph. Again, so as we just go went through the, with that example, right? So why you probably would be wondering why we are looking at the matrix? Matrix can be one way to represent an image, right? For the image, one single um, tiny bit that you can see on the image can be represented by some sort of color. RGB color, what's the corresponding value, right? For each even single smaller points, it really depends on what, what resolution you want to get into so that you can represent the original image by a matrix. And then once you have that matrix, you can do, you can pick, um, um, pick, um, pick a kernel and then use that kernel to run the convolution step. Once you have that convolution, you run the activation and then you do the max pooling, for example, use the max pooling, um, step to come back with a pooling um, vector and then flattening pooling matrix and then flattening that matrix to a one dimensional director, a vector. After that flattening, you can use that flat, flattened 1D vector as an input for your fully uh, connected neural network. And then you can leverage that to you to be used for classification. That's really convolutional network, neural network, which is, which is the um, um, main application of deep learning. Okay, let's continue. It's something called um, Boltzmann machines. This is another direction that we want to take a look for the uh, deep learning applications. It's called uh, restrict, Restricted Boltzmann Machines, RBM, which is a two layer or two group Boltzmann machine with M visible, visible units and N hidden units. 
if you look at the graph and what you have on the left hand side is visible, what you don't have, what you are not able to see on the right hand side is called hidden node. And then if you use um, a pair V and H, V is all these nodes on the left hand side, H are all the nodes on the right hand side, and then each one of the node is associated with a bias parameter alpha i, and each hidden unit has a bias, a bias of beta j. And whatever is connecting them is called the weight of wij. And then we are able to calculate the system energy for this network to be negative alpha i times vi summation minus of the beta j times hj minus wij times vihj. That's our energy, um, system energy definition. So that's RBM definition. So let's see what we're trying to do with this network. So what we are trying to do is we can, we know um, there are all type of connections possible, right? From uh, hidden nodes to the, vis from vis visible nodes to the hidden nodes. And then for all the possible configurations, we call it as the energy is called this normalization constant, which essentially is summation over all possible configurations. All possible config configuration comes back with the largest net network possible in your, um, in your potential uh, network. And then you can use that as your normalization constant. And then for a specific network configuration, it is this component. We use this component divided by the normalization constant or all the possible configurations uh, energy. And then that, that ratio is called probability of a network and associated with one V and H. And then, and then we're trying to maximize this constant. And we are trying to maximize this probability. And then in order to maximize this probability, you can see here, we actually introduced something that a little bit, uh, something that we never see before. Instead, using um, the, the maximization of the drawing probability is equivalent to maximization of the expected log probability of PV. And then we use partial order derivative of PV, log PV in terms of weight, come back with something really new that I just mentioned. This is something new is expectation over the associated distributions. So we use data that we saw minus, we use this uh, expectation over associated distributions of the data minus the IBM, uh, IBM model. And then we also use stochastic gradient method to update, to update this weight. And uh, you know, a lot of packages actually implemented uh, this um, RBM um, methodology or algorithm so uh, you can leverage. So again, we discussed convolutional neural nets here and also we focused on RBM, those two different types of deep learning algorithm. Now there are all kinds of new, new trends in deep learning. You should be aware uh, so you can read through some of this in the textbook, but I just want to point you out uh, what are the uh, key ones. You know, self-taught learning, transfer learning, one-shot learning, and capsule networks. You know, if you need time, you can, you know, pause the video, read through this slide, or you could read the textbook on your own. And more like um, GAN and hybrid learning. So last but not least, really want to mention uh, the hyperparameter tuning. We discussed the hyperparameter tuning in multiple uh, 
scenarios such as the k-means in the k, k in the k-means, lambda in the regularization, and the learning rate eta uh, in the deep learning um, scenario or stochastic, stochastic descent uh, algorithms, gradient, stochastic gradient descent algorithm uh, scenario. And all of these parameters are considered to be hyperparameter. Unfortunately, um, at this stage, majority of the hyperparameter uh, turning is empirical, meaning that you have to try an error. So care should be taken when setting such parameters. You should be aware you always, if there's a hyperparameter, for example, we discussed, uh, also discussed uh, uh, random forests, there are hyperparameters you could adjust there as well. So you could, in, in these um, software packages, you could use a default value, start from there, but sometimes you might need to do some sort of um, simulation or fine tuning on your own to come back with a better hyperparameter. Okay. In terms of packages, uh, you know, MATLAB has NN2, AlexNet, GoogleNet, and R has ElasticNet, DeepNet, and RCPPDL, uh, and interface to TensorFlow. Python has uh, scikit-learn, and um, it, ha it actually have uh, support vector machines and neural nets, and Google has TensorFlow and Keras. So um, that's the key um, software packages that actually implemented neural nets and deep learning. Uh, you should um, try, it, try it some of these uh, in your spare time. Okay, uh, that's pretty much everything for deep learning and that actually concludes this chapter, chapter eight, also conclude our uh, theory-based discussion on algorithms uh, for uh, data mining and machine learning. Thank you.